All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to make a lot of money with coloring books, and you don't have to spend a dime on advertising. And a matter of fact, you can't spend a dime on advertising. It's actually impossible for this. I've made thousands of dollars doing exactly this with coloring books, and today I'm gonna to show you the secret. So let's jump into it. All right, so you see I've typed in stoner coloring book, and Depending on who you are, you might have different opinions about these kind of books, but they do sell really well. And they're in a category of book that cannot be advertised, which is a big secret to their success. <clears throat> and the reason for this is Amazon doesn't allow this kind of content to be advertised. So it's in their rules, but you know, anything that has to do with drugs or to be providing a cure or healing, anything that is kind of on the cusp of that, they're not going to allow you to advertise. So one of the secrets here is that if you can't run ads, then neither can your competitors. And that really evens out the landscape when it comes to these kinds of coloring books or any book for that matter that can't be advertised. You'll notice here that the sponsored ads are coming up for Stoner Coloring Book. It's a human anatomy book in retro video games. I don't think this is positioned very well, but someone might be looking for this kind of thing and purchase a retro video game coloring book. That's possible. You'll notice that none of the Stoner books can have ads running to them. That's why you don't see any of them being advertised. So right away, we see this book here, 90s Cartoon Stoner Coloring Book. Now the BSR is 18,480. And I mean, that's pretty solid. And the other thing is, this is probably a pretty new book and it has no reviews and it's doing that. So let's just take a look at the sales for this. Okay, so 18,480 and it's a paperback. So selling about 10 books per day. So we have a book with zero reviews, it's brand new, it's selling 10 per day. And they're not, there's no ads being run or anything like that. So at $7.53, let's assume it's making two or three dollars per book. They're basically making somewhere between 20 and 30 and maybe like a thousand dollars a month off of this book. And it's actually it's pretty awesome. Continuing on, another one here, 30,276. And then we have a more established book here. It's a BSR of 30,904. And this has 3,278 reviews on it. So I'm gonna tell you another secret around coloring books. If your average book gives you, let's say, one organic review per every 150 purchases, a coloring book is gonna be more like one in 15 is gonna leave you a review. So you don't have to work nearly as hard to get reviews. You just have to make sure that the book is of a high quality. So when these reviews start coming in really fast, that they're gonna be positive. So not only can you not run ads to these, you also have to do very, very minimal work in getting reviews because they will come organically really fast. Now, one thing I'll say is don't create books around trademarked characters like they're doing in here. It's just going to create problems and you really don't need to do this to sell the books. Another thing about not needing to advertise or not being able to is that in the first 30 days of when you publish a book, it usually is going to end up on the first page and especially when people can't compete with you for ads. So these books are getting all this exposure as brand new books with no reviews. And now as long as the books have been done well, it's going to start to get a bunch of sales and a bunch of reviews and it's going to end up sticking on one of the top pages. And it's going to end up sticking organically in the search results, just like this one here with the 3,000 reviews. Another one here, 86 reviews, 24,000, 83,000. So I think you're kind of getting the idea here. Very little review work and no advertising and you put the book up and you're just going to get paid forever pretty much as long as this marketplace exists. But it all comes down to having a good product. So it's kind of a double-edged sword because if your book is gonna review really fast and you're gonna get sales quickly and easily, the product has to be spectacular because if those reviews go bad, which I've experienced myself, then you're gonna end up with a product that drops off the first page and then all of a sudden it's not selling and there's not really any way you can save it. So the other thing we wanna do is look at these books and find out why they're getting negative reviews. And typically I like to look at the three stars when we're doing this and we can use that feedback to make our books better. So this one here, it has 61 pages to color and take a look at the interior. There's nothing special about this book. This can be made really easily. Here's one thing that 
I don't really like, and I know sometimes causes bad reviews. If you can see here, this page is just that page, but it's a duplicate page. So they're trying to basically do less illustrations and just do a white one and a black one basically to you know beef up the size of the book without having to spend as much. And I mean, honestly, it's worked for them on this book, but I would recommend just doing more illustrations and giving them more unique products because they're gonna be happier if they have more things to color. And you probably will see that in some of the reviews of these books that people will say, oh, it was full of duplicate pages. So I like to check the three stars because they're usually reasonable. Okay, cute book. Here you go, super basic. Some of the drawings repeat themselves. There's also six blank pages at the end of the book. The six blank pages are generally put there, one, because people are trying to increase the book size, but two, it's so you can test whatever you're coloring with, your crayons or your pencil crayons, and you can just make sure the colors are what you think they are. So I'm not against having a few pages in the book, but this person obviously didn't understand that. So more half the book is repeat pages with white filled in black. As I know, because I've done these before and I've made the mistake, I already knew that this was going to be a big thing. But this is where you want to check. You can go, okay, what can I do that they did a bad job of and improve on my book so I can potentially compete or beat out this book when mine goes live? Because like I said, you don't have a lot of control once the book is up and live because you, it's, reviews aren't as big of a thing and also you can't run any ads. So as you can see, as we get further down the page, lots of great donor coloring books here, but still even further down, more results, 45,000 BSR. You know, this book here has 2,500 reviews. There's a lot of demand and I would consider the time of this video being done is kind of coming off the summer slump. So things are still a bit slower. As we get further into fall and then into winter in North America, these sales are gonna increase. So these numbers are actually not inflated at all right now, they're complete opposite. So one thing I keep seeing is psychedelic coloring book. So let's do psychedelic coloring book. This is the exact same idea as the stoner coloring book. I don't know if this would be more referring to like mushrooms or something like that or a different drug, but it's the same idea. They can't be advertised. So with the sponsored ads, we have alien monsters and we have like a haunting beauty coloring house book. You can see this one here is kind of just towing the line. And I mean, even then this ad could end up being taken down, even though it passed through just because of the nature of the book. There's some books that are in the gray area, like relaxation and stuff like that. But here's a psychedelic book, clearly about mushrooms, honey badger coloring, 67,000, no advertising. One thing I'll say about the pricing is when you first launch a book and it gets that 30 day boost through Amazon, it's a good idea to make the book cheaper. Instead of listing it at 10, 11, $12, like you might later when it's established, put it up for five, six, seven dollars And it's gonna allow the book to sell faster and you'd accumulate reviews quicker. And as long as you've done a good job on the book, you're gonna get positive reviews, positive feedback, and it's just gonna glue it organically to that first page. And then later you can slowly increase the price. So you can see, all these different books are selling and without ads and they're making anywhere from what I see here, a couple hundred to thousand plus per month. Just sitting here, like these people haven't had to do anything once the book's gone live. So I've given you a couple examples for coloring books that can't run ads to. So it's really an open playing field. I don't want to spill the beans on every single different niche, but anything you can think of that you're not allowed to advertise for is an open playing field for the most part on Amazon. So we're hopping on to one of my favorite freelancing platforms, which is Upwork.com. And this is where I originally have had all my coloring books created. So you're probably thinking, yes, you could use something like Upwork, but also we have AI now. You could use Midjourney and do this book for pretty much free. And I agree, that is the case and you 100% could. I'm just telling you the way that I've approached this. And also, even though Amazon is allowing AI, they're not 100% clear on their rules. So I wanna make sure that you're approaching this from the safest path. 
but you 100% could do this on AI for free and rather quickly. I'll just say that if you do decide to take that route, make sure that the illustrations that you're creating, even if they're really nice, they need to be colorable. You need, someone needs to be able to take their pencil crayons and come in there and be able to actually color it. Because some of these designs are so intricate that they look great, but you can't color them. That's the one thing that I'll say. Okay, so let's hop in here and really quick, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So in this case, it's just a short-term project. The title, looking for an illustrator. I'll fix that up, bad spelling. Illustration, it could be cartoons and comics, honestly. So I click illustration, drawing, okay. In this case, we'll say medium, one to three months. So entry, intermediate, expert, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, a variety of people are going to apply. Come full time, it could, but we'll just say no at this time. So I tend to pay per project. That way they can take their time and create something good. And I already know what the price is going to be or pay per illustration. Because if you make it hourly, you're kind of incentivizing them to take longer to make more money, obviously. So when it comes to the budget, I usually like to be around four or $5 per illustration because I think most people are pretty happy around there and I'm trying to do it so the person that is taking the job is happy with what they're getting paid and then I'm happy with what I've invested into the book. That one book had 61 pages and they were duplicates, so it had more like 30. So we could come along and say 40. It's not ideal, but as you can see, people are still buying the books and liking them. So right away, our book would have a higher value than that one that's already selling and reviewing quite well if we just did 40. So 40 at say $5, $200 for the book. And for the description here, I'll just type something out quickly and speed it up. And you can see what I would typically put. So this is roughly what I would put. Obviously, I'd be a little bit more detailed and I would maybe ask them to do a sample for me, which if they're an illustrator, probably wouldn't be a big deal. You could even offer to pay them for it as long as it fit the criteria of the book. And that's about it. So you're just gonna hit submit and then you're gonna start getting people applying for the job and you wanna sift through them, ask for samples, look at the work they've done and make sure they understand your project and be really clear that the illustrations need to be competitive with the other books in the market, if not better. So for the purpose of this, I'm not going to submit this job because I don't want a bunch of people applying for something that obviously uh, I'm not doing at the moment. But you can see here, basic details of what you're after, hit post this job, and then you'll start getting people contacting you. So a key thing is to take one of the best illustrations in the book and then have the illustrator, if possible, color that in and then add your book title to it. This is gonna make your cover. So not only is your cover gonna look great, also the people that are looking for books, a lot of the time they see the illustration on the cover and they go, hey, that's something I would like to color. And if you have a cover that has an illustration that's not in the book, you're gonna end up with bad reviews because people will purchase your book assuming they can color what's on the cover. And obviously I've learned this the hard way. So if you're looking to get into publishing coloring books, this to me is the best way to start. You're gonna require very little reviews, zero advertising budget, and costs can be free to like two, maybe $300, depending on how detailed of a coloring book you want to release. If you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button below. And uh, if you have any questions, Hit me up in the comments and I'll get right back to you.